This is our first YouTube video from September 2018. Hey guys, today my boyfriend Jay is going to be doing my makeup like Rihanna. And this is the last video we welcome upload. Or welcome back. It's Malia. And I'm Jay. We are the past two years has been a struggle, but I gained a lot of knowledge during this time. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I usually edit our videos. Hi, I'm Jay from Malia and Jay. Today, we won't need Malia because we are gonna talk about editing. Let's get started. Two years ago, I actually knew nothing about video editing. Literally knew nothing. So before we started our YouTube channel, I watched so many tutorial videos on YouTube like for about a month. And that's how we started. We didn't have a good camera, we just our smartphone, no lights, no mic, nothing. Since then, we have consistently uploaded videos on YouTube and we have over 100 videos now. I'm not gonna touch on every detail, but I'll share tips like which fonts I use, where I get my background music, and also share a lot of J recommended YouTube tutorial videos. I even have some paid course recommendations for the ambitious. I'll put all the links mentioned today in the description box so that you can check. Let's talk about our studio setup. This is where I usually edit when I'm home. This is Malia's desk and this is mine. I'm using Dell XPS 15 9500. I can confidently say this one is one of the best Windows laptops. Anyway, this is the mic we recently bought, Blue Yeti USB mic. Over here, there is a printer and some camera gears. And that is a whiteboard we recently bought, which has been really useful. Malia bought this because when there are a lot of videos to make, it's nice to see everything at once to stay organized. I often forget when to shoot or when to unload, so it's helping a lot to trap schedules for me. I usually like to drink coffee, and I would suggest wearing your favorite cozy clothes for editing. You're gonna be pretty focused on just editing, so you shouldn't be cold, hot, hungry, angry, sleepy, tired, sad, mad. So get your favorite drinks and get comfy. For software, I use Adobe Premiere Pro, but I think editing software is not that important. It's really just one of the tools that you can use when you wanna create videos. There are many other video editing softwares and you can just choose based on your preference or your current situations, like money. Whether you have a Mac or Windows, you can use Adobe Premiere Pro. I would say that one is the best option for Windows. If you have a Mac, I would 100% recommend editing with Final Cut Pro X. You can't use this software if you have Windows and also it's from Apple, so it's the best option for Mac environment. It's stable, fast, and easy to use. If you don't want paid apps, DaVinci Resolve would be one good option. You can use it for free with limited features, but I heard you can edit almost everything without a problem. Not sponsored? Speaking of sponsor, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare fosters an online learning community that helps individuals take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare serves as a platform for those creative and curious individuals to learn more about graphic design, photography, and even productivity. I've been taking video editing courses since last year already. I've been also looking at courses in color grading because I wanted to have a better understanding of it. And Skillshare gave me many well-organized, high-quality classes than ever. A great one I found is Premiere Pro Lumetri 2020, Color Correct and Color Grade Like a Pro by Jordi from Cinecom. By the end of the class, you will have a complete understanding of all the color correction tools with project files that they share. 
Above all, Skillshare have classes to fit your schedule and skill level. Why wait to develop the new skill? Do something today you couldn't do yesterday with short classes designed for real life. The first thousand of our subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership, so you can explore your creativity. Click the link in the description to join the strong community of fellow creatives to tap into your personal growth potential. Editing doesn't in one day, of course. It takes at least two days, usually three days. I don't exactly know how much time I spend on one video, but approximately eight hours on average is definitely time consuming. So I have to manage time well. You also have to plan the shooting parts like video concepts, message, script, preparation. And of course, you gotta shoot and edit and upload on YouTube. So I'm the one who shoot and edit all the videos. But aside from those two, Malia does everything else. Since I'm only talking about my part, let's get into shooting. For me, video editing starts from the shooting. Have you heard that video editing is like cooking? Just like cooking in the kitchen, if you don't have tasty and freshy ingredients, it doesn't matter how well you cook. The food will come out shitty and not that great. Great food comes from great ingredients. Great videos come from great footage. So honestly, I was going to talk more about how I shoot our YouTube videos in this video. But as I was writing the script, I realized I would never finish this video because I have lots of information to tell you guys. If you want to know more about shooting, leave a comment below to let me know you want to see it. Let's move on to editing. First, I turn Premiere Pro on. I put all the footage on the script panel and timeline. Before I start to cut the footage, I modify them first. I put different label colors on for slow-mo, speed rolls, and different size footage so that later on it's much easier to find and put different settings on later. Next, I put denoise effect on sound files and adjust it from 20% to 40% depending on the situation. Now I start to do a rough cut, cutting the unnecessary parts like random noises, sirens, or even something like this. Next is adding B-rolls on the track. What is B-roll? A B-roll is any footage that is considered to be secondary to your primary footage. So this is A-roll right now, and these are B-rolls. B-rolls make the video more dynamic, giving viewers something different to watch rather than just still footage. I put B-rolls when I mention something like products. It should be something directly related to the topic you are currently talking about. And after the rough cut and B-rolls, I look through again, but much more thoroughly this time. Color grading can be a bit tricky. I had to watch tons of videos on YouTube and Skillshare to get it. I currently use Becky and Chris' YouTube channel's LUT file because I record our videos with as low to picture profile. And it's been great. The most important thing in color grading is skin tone. I'll also share links to videos on how to get perfect skin tones from Cody and Victoria. I still haven't mastered every fundamental for color grading because of course, it takes a lot of experience. So in order to do better color grading, you just gotta do more and watch more. Don't worry, just, just start. And transition. Of course, you can make a great transition from the bottom, but it's 21st century humans. We can use templates. But before using transition, you need to ask yourself, do I need that transition? I recommend not putting in a lot of transitions, but just only when you really need it, like after talking about certain topics or like intro, outro, something like that. I use every transition from Mr. Horse. It's free, super easy to use. You just drag and drop them right into the timeline. 
They also have great text box animations and sound effects. Right now, I'm mainly using a font called Nexa, and sometimes like this, this, or that. I usually get fonts from thefonts.com, but also you can use Google Fonts, which has a lot. Just choose what you like, and when you use it on Premiere Pro, you just gotta play with it. Change to bold or light, change tracking, put shadow or text box. I was really confused on how to use text on videos, but I just learned from watching a lot of TV and other YouTube channels. So when I watch them, I look at how they use or arrange texts. If you want to learn more, I highly recommend reading some basic typography books. Stop selling ships and find out how type works. Designing with type. These books are for beginners but really detailed. After this, we'll be able to adapt the knowledge of how to use text aesthetically. Okay, now we're going to talk about how I use sound effects and background music. But before that, let's talk about 4K video downloader. On YouTube, when you want to download any song, sound effect, or video, you can use 4K video downloader, which is free. On the YouTube video page, simply copy the link, and after you paste the link, choose the best setting. If you just want to download the audio files, you can extract audio files only too. When I want to download some aesthetic sound effect, I search like aesthetic sound effects no copyright on YouTube. Many videos will pop up. Simply copy the link, check the setting, download and use it on Premiere Pro. I'll put some cute aesthetic sound effect link in the description too. For background music, YouTube has one audio library on YouTube Creator Studio. I think they also renovated the system. Now you can also download sound effects. But I don't really use them. Almost every background music I use is from this channel called Audio Library Music for Content Creators. I like this channel among a lot of background music channels because when you check the playlist, they sort the music by mood and also genres. So you can easily find music concepts that you are looking for. When I want to make the video look more happy, I check happy, bright, playlist, for just chill background music while talking, calm, hip hop, or R&B works. When I use music in our videos, I use the constant power effect, makes the start and end of music much more smoother so it doesn't bother viewers. You can right click the effect and select the sound effect as a default transition. And click the audio file that you want to apply the default transition and use shortcut shift D. That's the thing too, if you want to edit really faster and quickly, you gotta know a lot of shortcuts linked. <sighs> okay, I don't know how much it helped you, but I did my best. This video is also one of my most challenging videos. Of course, I'm still learning how to edit, but I just wanted to share what I've learned so far with you guys. And before I go, one last thing, one of my favorite YouTubers, but also filmmaker, Matt Diavella is planning to open a YouTube masterclass. So if you're interested, you can also join the wait list. If you have more questions about editing, Feel free to comment below. I'll do my best to answer those. If you have specific questions about how I shoot videos, let me know. I'll answer them in the follow-up video. Thanks for watching. See you later.